Hey yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What's happening with you all? It's your boy Gold Phoenix in the flesh. Rise from the ashes and be blessed. You already know the deal. Listen up. I'm at my mother's house still. I'm getting back on the road tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon or something like that. At least that's the plan. We'll see if I can actually get a load when I need to get a load. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it don't work out that way. It'll be Memorial Day weekend, so probably bad timing to get back out but I have the itch to get rolling and I'm in this house by myself because the rest of my family went on vacation so I stayed back just because you know I have stuff to do so it is what it is but that's not what I wanted to talk about I wanted to discuss a couple of things about my truck you know a couple of questions I have received and like DMs and you know comments and stuff like that even though you know I've stated it before but I guess I'll just go over all of it right so anyway one of the main questions I've gotten is if I purchased it or if I leased it and the reason I've been asked this question is because of all of the options that I had put on it you know that must cost a lot of money you must have bought the truck right no I said it in my last video. I lease this truck. I do not own it. For the time being, I have no real intention of owning it. Maybe my mind will change in the future, at which point I'll just put money down and buy out the lease. I could, but I don't want to. I just don't. Only way I'm going to buy the truck really is if I get into something that is more specialized and it makes sense to own it because I know that the expenses are going to pile up if I do that. Leasing it, yeah, I do have a lot of expenses, but at the same time, I don't really stress too much about it. Now I'm going to do something I don't usually do, which is... This is what I just got paid for last week. I don't know how well you guys can see. I have no... Why, why do I need to own the truck? Do you guys see the number... It just is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I am a trainer and stuff like that, so I do make more than like a solo driver would and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, I just <laughs> like I don't need to own the truck. I want the money. You know what I mean? So now, if I get into something specialized to where the loads are paying so dumb that I can justify having those expenses and you know paying it and not really worrying about it then I will go in that direction but for the time being that is not the way it looks I need to lease I need to have the warranty and all of that stuff for what it is that I do which is train team drive that kind of thing not to mention having students they're going to beat the truck up okay I take care of my equipment but I expect them to make mistakes. I expect them to hit things. I expect them to back into crap. I expect them to do a lot of stupid crap that, you know, even I did when I was a student. I didn't hit anything, but I did make mistakes. I expect them to screw up, essentially. And since they're going to screw up, I want them to screw up something that I don't own. I'm responsible for it financially, but I don't own it. I just give it back. Pay for repairs, but I could just give it back. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's that's it for that. Let's see what else. I have a Packard MX-13 455 horse 1650 torque. I know a lot of people do not agree with that. You, you need to have a Cummins or whatever. There's two reasons that I have the Packard motor. One, because I ordered the truck through the leasing at the company that I'm with. So when they do it, there are specific things that they want that's just going to be. I have no say in it. And one of those things is the engine. I couldn't get a Cummins if I wanted to getting the truck the way that I did. If I would have went to a dealership and ordered one and leased or financed one out that way, then yeah, I probably would have put a Cummins in it just because of the shop network and the repair network. I don't care for the power or anything because fuel economy really does win the race in this crap but it wasn't an option for me as for why they spec the pack R over the Cummins two reasons weight fuel mileage 
at my carrier, one of the requirements to be under their authority is to be able to haul 45,000 pounds. I need to be able to haul 45K. Not only that, they have restrictions on like wheelbase or something. My truck is right at the limit of how long it can be. I believe the max I could go is 240. My truck is a 238 wheelbase. That, so is pretty much everybody else who got a Peterbilt the same way. Everything from like, I wanna say 2017 up to, you know, mine being a 2023, everything would be a two, uh, 238. Freightliner is what, 228? My International is a 228? Yeah, the Volvos are the same, and then the Kenworths are 238, I believe. So, that's just, you know, certain things they order. The only thing I really had control over is like creature comforts. So, of course, I got Air Ride on the steer axle. I got it just to try it, really, and I could afford it. So, it was like, whatever, $1,300, take it disc brakes all the way around that was another 1300 i've had drums my entire career but i was like okay i'm in the reefer division so predominantly i deal with disc brakes on the trailer so if i had disc on my truck as well disc on the trailer and i have students they're better at dissipating heat and stuff like that being a teacher i'm thinking that is the safe thing to do and trust me it is those, those disc brakes compared to the drums oh my god it's night and day it's night and day. They don't even do that school bus noise where it's like, ooh, y'all know what I'm talking about. It, they don't even do that. It's just, then they just stop. They stop. Like, I had to teach myself to slow down later than I normally would just to have a smooth stop. They're that good. The pistons on them are like a foot long each. It's ridiculous. Let's see what else. What else? The nice leather seats, heated and cooled. I got that just because I wanted them. They're easier to clean. They're um, far more comfortable, far more adjustments, if you will. The escape door, that was standard. The visor, that was standard. The color, I picked that. Violet Effect is a beautiful color, and it represents my personality very well. It has a certain elegance to it that... I just didn't believe, you know, like a blue, a black, a red, green, anything like that would have. I'm known as the dude with the purple truck. It's recognizable. And usually when I go to a truck stop or shipper, receiver, or stuff like that, I'm the only guy around with that color. You can spot it from a mile away. It's, it's just unique. And, you know, there's some philosophical reasons as to why I chose that, but... We won't get into that right now. Yeah, just DM me on Instagram, I'll tell you, but for the video, nah. Let's see what else. Stainless steel quarter fenders, okay. That was like, what, 140 bucks? I wanted that. Um, I have super singles on a truck. That was not my choice. That is an authority thing. My company requires them. Why? Well, going back to weight. There's a bunch of things on that truck that make it lighter and lighter and lighter because my carrier is very big on freight weight. Max gross, we can all be 80,000 pounds. But the carrier I work with, they would rather have more of that weight in actual freight than equipment. You see what I'm saying? So, you take the engine, you take the super singles, that's more weight savings compared to having duals. You take the drive axle I have, which is the Peterbilt Flex Air. The one with the C-shaped leaf springs and, you know, loops up under the airbag with a bar under them. That's a lighter drive axle compared to having, like, a, a low air leaf, a low, low air leaf. Something like that. It's just lighter. It's about weight. So I know if I go to pick up a load, the way my truck is spec, which before all my stuff was in it, it was lighter than my international, surprisingly. It's only like 16,000 and some change pounds or something like that. I know I could pull 
45,400 and some change and I'll only be at like 79,000 and some change somewhere where about that that's all it is man so to be honest like I'm, I'm pleased with the truck at least the, the limited amount of driving I have done in it because I went home as soon as I picked it up um, so we'll see how it holds up once I get up out of here but as things stand right now I could care less I don't I don't care to have the big Cummins engine turned up I don't care to have all of the horsepower all the torque in the world and being able to pull a mountain at the end of the day I just want the money and a big part of the money is fuel economy and being able to stay out of the shop so we'll see if that truck stays out of the shop it'll be a pain when it does when not if but when it has to go to the shop because i can only really deal with peterbilt dealerships so i have to do some workarounds with that and probably have to tow and stuff like that that stuff warranty covers anyway at least my warranty does it's a very aggressive one so i really I don't have to pay for any of that and then my company you know if I'm down for more than two days they pay me what the truck costs per day if it's not driven so they'll just pay the truck payment I don't I literally don't <laughs> don't worry about it I just don't care I don't and that's what a lot of people don't understand is you know we look at it from the position of somebody who is owner opting or somebody who leases maybe at another company or heck company drivers have a lot to say too and they don't know what they're talking about y'all are w2 but at the end of the day the choices that i make in regards to the equipment that i use there's a specific reason behind all of it some of it is my choice some of it isn't i work with what i have the ability to work with if i can add anything extra or you know have more influence over what it is that I use of course I will take a little bit more charge and control that I would get a different motor for example I don't know if I do a different drive axle maybe the low low air leaf or something like that but you know and I would probably have duels too but other than that I don't care <laughs> This is about dollar bills. This is about Benjamin Franklin's, Andrew Jackson's, and stuff like that. This is not a pride thing for me. This is not a ego thing for me. I don't care to have the best truck on the road. I don't care to have the prettiest. I don't care to have the the fanciest or the most loaded out or whatever. Even though, you know, my truck is much nicer than a lot of people's, in all honesty. Like, I'm not even going to front on that. But it's not about the ego. It's literally just, I want this. These options are cool. This is for me. I could care less what anybody thought. Because at the end of the day, if I continue to keep getting paid that, well, there's nothing you could really say. It's about money. That's all it's ever been about. Bread. Cash. Not being impoverished, if you will. Ask yourself a question. If you're in trucking, why? And if you want to get into it, why? Because if you're going to get into this or stay in it for the long haul, you need to be doing it for the right reasons. Don't do it to impress anybody. Don't do it because, oh, I'm trying to go to the 75 Chrome shop and, and show everybody up at the show and all that stupid crap that don't make you no money. Don't do it because oh, I would have had the most Chrome and all that Chrome don't make you no bread, bro. And it don't make your truck go any faster. It, it, it's, it's an aesthetic. It's a I like this so I want it kind of thing. And I'm not hating on anybody who has a lot of Chrome or nothing like that. That's your thing. That is your thing. But are you doing it because you like it or are you doing it because they do? Just food for thought. Anybody who's really about their money doesn't really care about all of that stuff. It's nice to have, but it's not the most important thing on the planet. And that's all I had to say about that. So I'm going to relax, do a little um, 
grocery shopping and stuff, get my life together and get ready to get back on the road and jump in my Peterbilt, you know, with the Packard motor and the, and the uh, um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the smart nav and all that. Platinum interior, by the way. But um, just get ready to roll out. Gotta pick my student back up. He's in Louisiana. So we'll see what happens. I'll probably get a little going clean across the country, to be honest. That'd be nice, but we'll see. Anyway, as I always tell you guys, be happy, stay blessed, do not be afraid to make drastic changes in your life it might end up being the best decision you ever made i am gold phoenix and i'm out